Cataractcoach.com. Why am I getting corneal edema? So this anonymous surgeon is asking for the collective help of our Cataract Coach group. Now this surgeon is about three years out of training, has done at least a thousand cases, and the surgeon says, even on my routine case, I'm still getting corneal edema post-op day one. Why is that? So let's watch the video. Now we've sped the video up to two and a half times normal speed here. So you can see the eyes nicely draped, good position, iris is parallel to the floor of the room. All this looks great. I like how the lid margin is sequestered away and so there's no contamination of the tear film. Okay, some tri-pen blue dye going in. Don't know if you need the tri-pen blue dye, but uh, certainly if you want to put it, you can use it. That shouldn't cause any issues really. Now, remember, anything can cause a coronal edema. You're just getting some extra inflammation from what? Is it too much ultrasonic power? Are you not protecting the endothelium? Or is it something you injected in the eye causing the issue? Now, that looks like a dispersive disc elastic. I'm not sure the brand there, but that looks good. Now, let's see the main incision here. So, making a little groove there, and that looks okay. I think the incision's a little short for my taste, but should be reasonable. And now, let's watch the rexes here. I like how the incisions nick the limbal vessels. Now, starting off with cystitome, that all looks reasonable. Okay, adjusting the microscope lighting, I like that. This is that coaxial lighting. You can see now the Purkinje image just has those two lights. Those are one in each ocular, coaxial to your oculars. Now, I like the little micro forceps. Those are kind of nifty. They've got a measuring and a ruler on the tip as well, and you're creating a nice-looking capsule rex there. Yeah, get the bubble out of the way. More viscolats if you need it. I like that idea. Rexes for me is a little on the small side, but we'll see at the end with the optic overlap. Probably a four and a half, 475 diameter rexes looks reasonable. Here we go. Specialized chain cannula for some hydro dissection. Left side and right side. That looks great. Now let's talk about the phaco settings before we get into the actual phaco surgery. So here you can see surgeons using a pulse mode, pulse rate 26 pulses a second, only using torsional energy from a low of 20% to high of 65%. And 80% time on. All right, so you give them a lot of energy there. Interocular pressure, 65 millimeters mercury. Vacuum, you can see ramped up to 525. Aspiration pressure flow rate, 37. These are all good settings for some phaco chop technique. Now let's talk about that duty cycle. So here's an example where 80% duty cycle means that for the same number of pulses per second, we have 80% on and then 20% off. 80% on for ultrasound, 20% off. But look at the example below here. This is a 40% duty cycle. So each pulse is now 40% on and 60% off. So you can see the total number of pulses per second is obviously the same, but you're gonna deliver half as much energy with the bottom setting. So an advice I have for this surgeon is, let's try using a lower duty cycle because you could literally half the phaco energy for this eye. Now let's get back to the surgery. And then we'll see the nucleofractus technique here. A little extra aliquot of viscoelastic. I do like that technique. You know, I do that frequently. Now let's see with the phaco probe. Now, I'm assuming the surgeon's already using good phaco power modulations. We know about that. If you don't know how to choose your phaco settings, whether it's fluidix or the ultrasound power, you got to go to cataractcoach.com and watch that whole series. Ten-part series of learning how to set up your machine. Now, we're moving some of the anterior cortical material. And let's see what we're going to do here. Okay, groove down the middle. Oh, maybe a chop. Look at that. That's really nicely done. So a little bit of a pit, a grooved first, and then a little chop there. The chopping is great. You've got good skills. I think you're doing a great job here. And then a little horizontal chop again with the chopper going around, and you're creating your pieces. And it's pretty good. I'm pretty, rotating it around. If it does not spin, you will not win, but this is spinning. You're winning. So let's see. Getting the pieces fully separated. Let's see. The surgeon's going to I sometimes like to, you know, remove pieces as I chop, but you can sort of do all the chopping first. Oh, you're following my direction. There we go. We're moving one quadrant here. Now, uh, aspirating it just about at the iris plane. That looks pretty reasonable, actually. Not a very dense cataract, so we're not expecting a lot of ultrasonic energy. Another nice chop there. Beautifully done. Pieces being removed very efficiently. A little sub-chop if you need it. Again, so far, everything looks pretty good here. Not exactly sure what's going on. And why are getting coronal edema? So here are the pieces, again, being removed. Nicely done. You're operating in a good position. You're not riding the endothelium, which is good. right? Sometimes a novice surgeon will operate too close to the endothelium. Looks like you're bringing the pieces from in the bag to just about iris plane, which is reasonable. I do it the same way. 
All right, hey, let me tell you about our podcast, the top podcast in all of ophthalmology. It will teach you to be a better and more successful surgeon. I promise. Check it out everywhere where you find podcast services. Now, back to the IA removal. The cortex removal, the IA probe. There you go, aspirating it. Um, that looks like the same machine I'm using. Looks like the same tip, polymer tip there. Cortex cleaned up pretty nicely. Now, that looks good. Now, you don't want to leave, obviously, lens material because that's going to cause a large inflammatory response. It's part of the reason I like to do a little bit of capsule polishing here. Now, capsule polishing of the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim is not absolutely necessary. But here, you look at that, a little bit of polishing too. I just think it helps de- you know, remove some of that inflammatory material, that lens material, which will cause inflammation. Here comes the viscoelastic. Again, looks good. Rexus looks fine. A little more viscoelastic. Looks like maybe there's your cohesive one. And then we'll get the lens in the back. So, so far, so good. I don't see anything that's kind of making me worried. Here's a single piece of acrylic lens being injected. Let's see what we got here. Nice and easy. Delivered it in the bag. Beautifully done. Get that rotated around. There you go. That's the six millimeter optics. So, yeah, the Rexus is not bad. Rexus is probably uh, 475 range, I'd say. And now going behind the optic. I like that too. To remove viscoelastic. Very nicely done. Remove viscoelastic, cleaning up the anterior ch- uh, chamber for a viscoelastic. Again, all looks pretty good here. Not seeing any issues. So you, the viewer, help us out here, the cataract coach family. This surgeon needs our advice. What do you think could be done differently here to help prevent getting coronal edema? I'm asking the whole group because I'm not exactly sure. So it looks like a pretty good case to me. Again, this is two and a half times the normal speed, so maybe the full unedited case was 13, 14 minutes, but that's pretty good. Here at the end, looks good. So I need your comments below. Please comment below. Let us learn together. Please be helpful and give a suggestion down below.